Hi, welcome to This is Gravel. I'm Bobby Thompson. This is Leland Dane sitting right here next to me in a beautiful carbon copy of my hat. Um, I like to say that I wore it first and I wear it better. So with that, um, Leland, what's been going on? Well, uh, other than uh, spying outside your bedroom window waiting to see what you put on every morning, not too much. How's that? <laughs> um, we rode bikes last weekend. We did. We got out and uh, did some, some gravel riding. Okay. Wabunsa County. And it is beautiful. It is up there. Yeah. Um, we, we had told uh, viewers before that we were going up for uh, the gravel ride for Maisie's Pride, and it was a spectacular one. Course, it was our, beautiful. Probably the first time, I think, this year that I've ridden above 90 degrees also. The sun came out. It was yeah. hot that day. Um, later in today's episode, we'll be talking about cramping, um, the effects of cramping, maybe how to prevent them, maybe how to help cover, recover from, from cramping, uh, in-ride recovery. Um, we're going to be talking a little bit about the ride mazes. You're going to see some highlights coming up in today's, today's episode. Um, you know, my, uh, we got a little bit of rain here this week. My girls and I have been out riding, jumping through puddles. So I uh, took him to school this morning. First thing I did was hit the biggest puddle outside the house and made them both mad at me because apparently they care about how they look at school now. So Reagan and Nora, I love you and daddy doesn't care how you look at school. <laughs> Anything else? Well, uh, I guess tell me a little bit about how Maisie's went for you. I'd love to hear about it. Oh, well Maisie's, um, yeah, it was my first humbling ride of the year, actually. So <laughs> you gotta um, have those every now and again. Yeah, you know, I was all hyped, was all prepared, ready for it. And uh, first rule of racing in a gravel event was uh, I was reminded, and that's you have to finish the race. Um, I did finish. I thought for a lot of the ride I wasn't going to finish. Uh, the heat came out. Nutrition wasn't strong. Hydration wasn't strong. And, you know, I fought through 70 miles with the cramps and uh, the hills are beautiful out there. And uh, that's why I fought through 70 miles with the cramps. So, but it was a, you know, it was a good humbling experience, especially with the big races we've got coming up. Well, and to be fair, Bobby was sick a lot of last week leading into it. And so I know you'd mentioned to me that your fluid intake probably wasn't ideal giving the extra head cold and chest congestion or whatever it was that you were fighting? I took as much NyQuil as was legally allowed during the week. <laughs> and, uh, you know, uh, cold max that was allowed during the week, trying to get better for the event. And I, yeah, I didn't start off strong, but we still got through it. So yeah. you decided to attempt the fat bike. Yeah. The event. Yeah, I uh, signed up for the fat bike class, and I'm hoping to do, maybe if I state it uh, publicly here, I'm registered for the Mata Hay 100, which is a 100-mile single track event. And so I figured if I'm going to manage that on my fat bike, I've got to be able to do 100 miles of gravel on my fat bike. And um, similar experience. I had uh, cramping, but uh, for a whole different reason. And mine was just good old-fashioned fatigue. I had not been training to ride that kind of distance. And we usually want to blame all other manner of things electrolytes and dehydration and that sort of thing which can be a cause but uh, more times than not uh, you're just asking more of your muscles on race day than you do uh, in training and that causes your muscles to be quite angry at you and that was the case for me and so I fought them for a good 40 out uh, of 45 miles but I despite wanting to quit repeatedly I struggled on to the finish and was even able to get the W so yeah I think that's kind of the, the wanting to quit um I didn't even want a pickup from anybody. I wanted to stop, go curl up in the shade, a nice little <laughs> ball, and fall asleep because I knew that it was the wind was there was a nice breeze and I knew that it was cool in the shade and I didn't care about someone coming and getting me. I just wanted a nap. I just wanted to sleep. I wanted a good two-hour nap and then maybe I'll think about what I want to do next. But um, I had some good friends, uh, Jeff Young and Sean O'Mara, who um, would not let me stop and. Uh, uh, verbally would not let me stop so mm -hmm. so it helps out sometimes to to ride with a group like that and get through yeah. the event so um i was left behind by all of my friends and so i had to call i, I could put a, a fat bike i put a call in to scotty o'mara and i said scott tell me not to quit <laughs> so he had to talk me out of it because um i was walking a hill and i made a phone call because um, and I knew the phone call wasn't to, to call for help, but uh, I needed someone there telling me to keep going because I sure didn't want to. But uh, it, it was definitely a beautiful ride, and yeah. um, although video doesn't quite do it justice, Matt, our producer, was out there, and he was able to get some footage, and I think we should take a look at that. Absolutely. Thanks, Matt. Let's see what you got.
I'm Ryan Dudley. This is my idea. You can blame me, okay? Okay? started off, there was a pretty small group of us um, working together pretty well, and then we rode into the checkpoint, and I had a real fast change over there, got my bottles, got off, and decided to just try and uh, go by myself after that. Felt really good, so worked out pretty well. Matt, David, thank you so much for being out there this weekend. It's fun to kind of re see it again from a, a different point of view, isn't it? I love watching this stuff. I know, especially when you're not the one actually going up the hill while you're watching it. So it's, it, you get a little different point of view to it. So um, great ride, great event. Do it again next year? Uh, we shall see. Okay. It was, it was hard. It's, so. it's, a, it's a difficult 100 miler and it's tough timing for me. You know, we're just a few weeks out from Dirty Kansas. And so um, I don't know that I'll ever have time to properly prepare for this one <laughs> uh, because it comes so close to a yeah. busy season for us. Yeah, it really does. Okay. Uh, we have a giveaway this week. Um, we have Goo Hydration Kit, which includes, there's some drink packets in there. There's some chomps, I believe. And we have Shammy Butter. Uh, contest is going to be a caption this it's gonna the picture will be on our get gravel groove Facebook page and sometime probably within the next 24 to 48 hours after seeing this uh, right here so um, please give us your captions and uh, we'll, we'll know in two weeks we'll get you back a winner so you need the butter butter makes it better let me just say the caption is gonna be of a friend of mine and it's the same friend of mine who gave me the same cheesy grin that you're going to see. He gave it to me all day long during the ride. So thank you, Jeff. We love you. I certainly can't wait to see what kind of responses we get for that. Again, Jeff, you are quite welcome. Um, so cramping, we wanted to talk about cramping today and uh, it seems to be very appropriate given the fact that you and I both experienced some cramping this past weekend at Maisie's and, and both for very different reasons. And so um, it's a question we get asked a lot. Um, and as we are starting to warm up, I think people need uh, this kind of information and need to be prepared with how to prevent cramps um, before they occur and how to deal with them if unfortunately they do. I think cramps will become more of an issue as the weather is heating up. I think you get a little overconfident during the winter and the cool months when you're out there doing these long rides and pushing. Um, you think you've, you know, you've never had to deal with it, you're going to be fine, and at some point we're all going to get them. So, uh, mine came last weekend, as you said. Uh, it was, you know, they start off small like most people's cramps do, but they, they, were, they were pretty intense throughout the day. At one point I even was going up a hill. Um, one leg fully locked up with cramps, tried to unclip, couldn't move the foot because it was cramped up and the other leg cramped up. So the only thing you can do on a hill at that point is grip your bike hard and hope for a soft landing. Um, <laughs> it is humbling when other riders are, are coming along and you're laying there on the gravel with your bike laying on top of you. You're clipped in. You can't clip out because your leg won't move. Dang it. Where so were you Matt just have to wait. I know you just got to wait like 15 <laughs> seconds for the cramp to lessen up so you can get up. Would have loved to see that. Yeah, it was uh, it was very humbling, but uh, it just reminded you, reminded me of what it was like, you know, a year or two ago uh, when I used to cramp on all all the rides that I did. So 
Very real. Yeah, and I think before we can really go into talking about how to prevent cramps, we need to really um, discuss what causes the cramps in the first place. And there's a lot of information on this. And so remember, just in our short little broadcast, you're going to get the um, casual, quote unquote, approach to cramping. And there's certainly a lot more we could dive into and simply don't have the time. So um, these are a bit of the highlights. But um, probably the number one cause that most people refuse to admit is, is simply training and, and a lack of training training or conversely asking too much. I think a lot of people come into an event really prepared and thinking they're prepared, but then they go out in a race much harder than they do in training. And muscular fatigue um, is the pri primary cause of cramping. And so um, there's a couple ways to combat that. One, obviously train and prepare yourself. If you're going to do a 100 mile gravel ride in one day, it's probably best to at least be riding 100 miles in a week, which I have not been doing for months. So my my muscles were not prepared for the task I was asking of them and they were fatigued and they were cramping and that was my issue because my nutrition and hydration was spot on. Mm -hmm. um, there were a few good takeaways I could take from Maisie's ride and that was one of them. So I knew that was not the issue and I knew going into it uh, my fitness was going to be a problem. Uh, unfortunately it led to some cramping but that's something I can remedy. The other part of that is um, for a 100 mile event or these 200 mile events or even longer, um, pacing is obviously a big part of it. And I think people get caught up and they get a little bit lost in the big group of people and they want to go harder and they get sucked into this group and they don't realize it at the time. They don't feel like they're going too hard, but in fact they are. If they were to look down to their heart rate, heart rate monitor or power meter, they'd probably find that they're, whoa, I'm uh, going a little bit too, too hard, much harder than what I need to be five miles into to a 100 mile race or a 200 mile race. I guarantee you, any of these races we do that's long like this, the first 20 to 30 miles that you do in that race is probably going to be faster than any 20 to 30 miles that you've done just because you've gotten caught up in a group and either you can't get out of the group or you want to stay with the group. Yeah, yeah. And so prepare and pace. Um, the second cause is, of course, electrolytes. We hear a lot about this, and the science is actually evolving on this. And so um, I think it's a, we can talk about where we, what we think we know now, and it's going to be a, a conversation that's always going to take place because as we learn more about what causes cramping and how to combat it, that's going to evolve and change. But we know that um, electrolytes such as potassium, sat sodium, magnesium, those types of uh, minerals assist in the function of our muscles. And so taking in those um, substances is obviously to your best benefit, especially the hotter it gets, because as you sweat, you lose those electrolytes with the water. And so um, what the right number is for each person, we can't even begin to go into that right now. I mean, you need to find out personally for yourself um, how much uh, water in general and electrolyte um, mix you need to be taking and that changes as the temperature changes mm -hmm. and as the humidity changes and as the wind changes yeah. because um, there's a difference between um, 85 degrees and the wind at your back and no air moving over you versus 85 degrees and at least a breeze moving over you and sometimes mm -hmm. not that you ever are hoping for that headwind but sometimes that cool little breeze going over you feels a whole lot better and so i guarantee you the seven miles that we had the tailwind in the 85 90 degree sun was hotter than than going with Absolutely. the wind and I in my opinion it was harder because yeah. you were you did feel zapped that entire time yeah it, it can take it out of you and so um, you're probably going to be taking in more fluids and I actually saw this and you have to be careful with what you see out there because um, I actually saw somewhere in an article from a, a quote-unquote professional where um, they'd made the comment to um, as a rule of thumb, drink when you're thirsty. Well, the truth is, is you need to be drinking far before you feel thirsty because if you're feeling thirsty, it's too late and yeah. your body's telling you you're behind uh, the game. You need to be drinking a lot more. And so you need to drink early and drink often, even right from the get-go in the morning when it's still cool. You need to be putting those fluids in your body because your body's storing that mm -hmm. uh, for later. And so you, got, you can't fall behind on that. No, I think that's the most important part on preventing cramps is staying ahead of the game, period. Yeah. Whether any of your points, staying ahead of the game. Yeah, so inevitably, just despite our best efforts, we're going to ask too much of ourselves and um, be the typical humans that we are and not follow our nutrition plan. So you're, you're probably going to experience cramps at some point. And at that point in time, 
It's no longer a question of what could I have done to prevent it. Now, how do you deal with the cramps? So, Bobby, what, do you, what have you found that works for you when you are cramping on the bike, besides right. just tipping over and laying on the gravel? No, yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, it's getting, usually it, it involves getting mentally right. And what I mean by that is, if I'm to the point where I'm cramping that severely, then chances are I've already started to lose the mental battle as well with where I'm at, hydration-wise, nutrition-wise, and just the general ride. Um, so if I start to get into severe cramping, that's when you, you got to stop, gather your senses and, and, and create a new plan. You got to get back on top of the nutrition, back on top of the hydration, and you have to start easing up on the in between the hills part, you know, the, the descents and the flats, you got to have a controlled rhythm. And usually what got you in the position in, that you were in is you didn't do that. And so it's even harder to do that now. You're hurting. The next hill, you're going to cramp up again, but you have to take it one hill at a time. You got to keep deep breathing. You got to keep the nutrition. And then you got to get ready for the next hill and the next hill. You know, and typically, I don't know, 30 minutes, an hour down the road, they do start to lessen up. It's not, it's, it's not going to be a quick fix. You can't pop a pill. I always yeah. laugh at the... the the whatever the the name brands the you know you pop this pill and you'll be great on your cramps it's still going to hurt and and you still got to keep that under control until your legs go get back underneath you again but to your point you can bring yourself out of it yes and that's why you take those pills not for the instant uh, gratification but knowing that that's going to help you get out of that situation that's correct um, and so there's also some things you can do to ease the suffering um, from a, a more physical standpoint. Um, one, obviously, um, shift down out of a hard gear. You're probably going to slow your cadence when you're cramping, but the reality is, and not to turn this into a cadence talk because that's a whole other conversation, but um, the slower your cadence, the more force you're asking of your muscles to keep the, the bike going. And so um, the more you ask, the more force you're asking of your muscles, the more likely they are to continue cramping. So shift down spin it to win it. You should be doing that anyways from the get-go, but especially when you have cramps, um, shift into a lower gear and try to spin a higher cadence. If that still isn't working, um, get off and walk a hill. Yeah. Not only will you probably go the same pace as if you're trying to stay on your bike and fight through a cramp on a climb, but it's going to feel a whole heck of a lot better, and you're going to get to the top of that climb and have naturally kind of stretched that out. And then that's the other bit of stretching. advice is just to simply stop and stretch it if that's the point you're at. Um, stretching is going to help work out a muscle or get your thumb in there or the palm of your hand and try to rub it around and try to relax that muscle a little bit. You know that when I'm in a race or a ride or whatever you want to call it, what, the, the thought of actually stopping and going over to the side and stretching, <clears throat> I'm probably not going to do that because I'm focused on just go, go, go. However, the ride as far as you can up a hill, don't press the leg too hard. When it starts to hurt, get off and finish the hill with a walk. It's the same thing as if I had pulled over the side, but I still feel like I'm moving forward. Yeah. So absolutely, get off and, and, and walk a little bit. You're gonna stretch your calves when you do that, you're gonna stretch your legs, and then you're ready for the next descent, and you just might have enough to get over the next hill by doing that. Yeah, get that out of your mindset. In, in Maisie's ride last weekend, I only had 10 minutes of stoppage time total, including my halfway checkpoint and any time I spent off the bike trying to work through my cramps because I shifted down and I spun and I walked a couple of hills and I had no shame in doing it at the time because I knew it was going to make me feel better and I was still moving forward. I didn't allow myself to get to the point where I was um, fully locked up laying in the ditch trying to work it out. Um, because I was taking those preventative and I maintained my nutrition like you're talking about and even though Everything was miserable and nothing tasted good and I didn't want to do anything I knew I had to and, and I was I got myself right mentally and was forcing those th fluids in and forcing myself to keep eating because I was still out there and Yeah, I had to keep doing it and at the end of the day it's all about finishing the ride mm -hmm. and you need to do what you need to do to finish. Yeah. So. so again, do your homework on this subject. If you have more specific questions for us, that's obviously a very big picture view, but those are some real techniques that can help you. Um, first and foremost, try to uh, prepare yourself and prevent them from ever happening. And if that doesn't work, you've now got some ammunition for how to tackle those once they occur. Leland, what's up for you next in the, in, in the coming weeks? Well, uh, the simple answer is three long, hard weeks of DK planning. And so um, hopefully I'll get on the bike a little bit. Remember, commutes count because um, that's about all I'll be <laughs> logging is my one mile ride from my house to the office. But uh, that's going to be uh, consuming my time. And uh, we're cool. really excited and planes are coming along perfectly. And it's going to be a great DK. Cool. How about you? What's next? Yeah, I'm so glad you asked. <laughs> no one ever asked me what I'm thinking. Um, 
the next three weeks are for me not to focus on just one event but i am going to be focused on the dirty kansas for the next three weeks i do have a, a ride um, i'm going to do on the 21st um, down in winfield kansas elrod cert mm -hmm. and then uh after that one I'm, it'll be i mean it's all dirty kansas but i'll be tapering down for the dirty kansas i'll be getting nutrition ready for the dirty kansas i have family that comes in for the, it's like a thompson family reunion that weekend <laughs> so um trying to coordinate you know family coming to town beds uh what everyone's going to eat um where we have i'm on team already so we're going to be doing hosting some events for the dirty kansas so yeah my next three weeks will be all about that event so yeah. Well, just remember to relax and get plenty of rest. Yes. And for this is just a general uh, piece of info for all uh, folks preparing for a big epic event is um, you can do more to work yourself up and hurt yourself in the last few weeks leading up to a big event than help yourself. So just remember those last couple weeks to mind your nutrition and hydration and get plenty of rest. So we've got questions, right? We do. They're actually in an envelope. Isn't that cute? Ah, I feel like I'm getting a birthday card. I, I wish he hadn't actually sealed it because, you know, yeah, he, he licked that. He did lick that. Yeah, so that's kind of weird. But uh, look at that. Look what we got right there. Isn't that cool? <laughs> well, you should do the honors ooh, there. Ooh, ooh, I get to read. Okay. It's kind of... All right. You ready? Here we go. Do all serious cyclists wear gloves? Well, if you know, I guess I have to. De we'd have to define if we're serious cyclists or Let's not. Say cyclists. But, uh, Let's say cyclists. Um, I did not wear gloves at Maisie's this weekend, and I did happen to crash. And so, I guess I should start by saying there's a couple good reasons why you could wear gloves, and that is um, skin protection if you were to go down, um, a nice snot rag, I guess, snot if rag. you want it. Me personally, I've stopped wearing gloves, and I, I really don't have a good reason for the viewers as to why, other than um, I don't feel that I need them. And even though I do go down on occasion, and occasionally I'll get uh, some bumps and bruises and scrapes, um, it's just I, I don't feel that I need them. I've got a good pair of grips that I don't have raw hands or um, rubbing issues, and so... No gloves for me. Okay, no gloves for you. I am going to stop wearing gloves because I want a full body tan. And when I wear <laughs> gloves, I have tan lines here. So um, No tan lines. Right. So I'm trying to find the jersey that allows me to tan through the jersey too so I can get the full body tan. Otherwise, I'd be wearing gloves. You want to get so. rid of your biker tan? Just a little bit. Yeah. All okay. Right. Number two. What kind of supplemental training is good for biking? I lift weights two to three days a week, with half of those days being leg days. How do I incorporate that into my riding schedule? And that comes from Luke. Um, that's a great question, and um, a lot of people ask this, and um, there's a lot of reasons why you could incorporate cross-training or um, other activities into your bike prep. If you've got a very specific cycling goal, and unless you've got a, a real weakness to overcome, I would recommend that you focus most of your exercise on the bike if you're going to try something like the Dirty Kanza. But if you're, you're looking to um, overcome a strength deficiency or something of that nature or, or simply enjoy um, maintaining that component of your active lifestyle, then there's no harm in doing some weightlifting. But uh, for endurance sports, I would say that uh, you'd be better off doing high repetitions of a low weight and even a lot of um, just freestanding body weight. Um, um, just freestanding squats and lunges and wall sits and that sort of thing um, because those are going to be more endurance based and opposed to heavy weight and mm -hmm. so that would be my recommendation there and then of course if you want to go for the, farther into cross sports triathlons and um, that sort of thing obviously you've got a whole new area to juggle between uh, running and biking and and that sort of thing but generally speaking for me go to uh, um, event specificity so yeah. If you're training for a bike ride, ride your bike. Yeah. I won't say much on that, except that I've done uh, a couple years worth of the weight training, didn't get too much faster on the bike. And since I just started riding more consistently and doing interval workouts on the bike, that's when I became stronger on the bike myself. So I think it's all about the bike. Okay. We want to thank you, Luke. And question of the week award will be given to you. You will receive Goo Koozie. And a sweet Primal t-shirt. So definitely keep those questions coming. Um, we've got some sweet swag from our sponsors to be given away, and uh, we'd love to be giving it to you. Absolutely. We've got more questions coming. All right, next up. Oh, I like this one. Do you wear headphones on the bike? If so, what are you listening to? 
Well, it should be stated that most gravel grinders take place on open public roads. And so if you do wear headphones, um, I'm going to put the safety hat on and, and make sure that you have at least one ear free. Um, but occasionally I do ride with, with headphones. Okay. And so I usually... Call you would, lame or something. Uh, okay. I listen to, uh, you know, I got my, my T-Swift, Acacia, my jams. Do you even know what that is? I hear the kids talking about it. That's what I thought. Good grief. <laughs> do you want me to answer this one? Yes. Okay. Please do. I do wear headphones. Um, I actually just wear the. I wear a single headphone on, on one ear. I very rarely have them in both. Um, you see? Um, and that is so that I can hear road noise, um, also carry on a conversation with people in the group if I'm riding with a group. But um, if I am totally solo, on my own, gotten dropped by everyone, um, yeah, you may see me occasionally with the two headphones in, but normally it's just the one. And as far as what I listen to, I have a six-year-old and a nine-year-old, and I listen to anything and everything you, so you can know what I'm possibly about. imagine, including, yeah, I, I mean, just everything from preschool rap to hardcore country. I mean, we got a little bit of everything. We may <laughs> even have some some soft jazz on there. So it's whatever it takes to get me to the finish line. Oh, hey. Listen to whatever gets you to the finish line. All right. How does the weather forecast affect your ride in regards to prep and the mental aspect? Well, for me personally, the, the gnarlier, the better. Um, I love uh, sloppy ride. conditions. Well, I have been for quite some time, and um, I typically excel when the road conditions and the weather conditions are even worse. So, okay. yes, yes. Um, so for me, it gets me excited. Okay. Um, I freak out about the weather. Um, I watch the weather apps every hour on the hour leading up to a race. And then about... Paranoid, stressful, no rest. Right, right. And then about a day before the race, I realize that it doesn't matter. We still have to do the ride. And uh, you just uh, get on the bike and ride as far as the morning of the event. Um, if it's going to rain, it's going to rain. You're going to get wet. No amount of rain protection is going to keep you from getting wet. So keep the gear dry that needs to stay dry and just have fun on that day. Pull up your bootstraps, yes. Nancy. Next. If you could ride a tandem with anyone, who would it be? You go first on that one. No, I was asking the question I know, to I you. Wanna, I want to reverse the question asking order Too here. Too late. Um, <laughs> if I could ride tandem with anyone, it would be my loving wife, Carrie. Because <laughs> I love her, she supports me, and I should probably ride more often with her. So, your turn. Talk that one. Um, well, I, I have a tandem, and I get to ride with my wife on occasion. Okay. So, honey, I love you, and I love riding with you, but um, I'm going to go outside the, the norm on this one. Okay. Um, I've, I've also, you know, probably, you know, here's, here's what it really comes down to, is... Jeff Young and I have been talking about doing a race tandem with uh, just our bibs and a bow tie. So that has yet to, to happen. Jeff, let's make this magic happen. The public wants to see that. I'm sure of it. And so uh, that's who I want to ride, be riding a tandem with. Spider-Man. Uh, I would yeah. love to ride with Spider-Man. I mean, the dude's mm. awesome. He's got extra strength. He can, he can he could web grab a tree to help pull no. you up the hill. Spider-Man. I want to change my answer to Spider-Man. Love you, Carrie. Do Spider-Man. They don't carry over to the bike. Let's Have just, you seen how strong he is? That. The dude's ripped. I mean, at least go Hulk style in a sprint. No, Come Hulk, on. Hulk would break your crank. Well. You can't go overboard. You're going to need a tandem built for his strengths, right. obviously. Plus, he's heavy. Spider-Man's a little guy. Okay. <laughs> That's all the questions we have for today. Next week, I believe we're going to have... In two weeks, a DK special leading yeah, up to the Dirty Cancer. We'll have another episode certainly before DK, so be uh, tuning in for that. Yeah, please do, and we'll look forward to seeing you then. Thanks Send all. us your questions. Uh, write to us on Facebook, social media, all that fun stuff. Bobby Thompson, the casual cyclist, Dirty Cancer questions. Certainly reach out to me, Leland Danes, and uh, we'll catch you next time. Bye.